This is gonna take forever. Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo. This is my YouTube channel. Today we are digging back into my Street Freak Firebird project. If you don't know about it, I've got a 1974 Pontiac Firebird with a wild paint job on this thing. Uh, it's just like a time capsule straight out of 82. It's as cool as can be, velour interior, shag carpet. I bought it for a thousand bucks without a motor. It was a four speed car. And now I'm gonna do my best to fill that thing with 800 horsepower and spend 20 times as much as I did on the car in getting the car moving. That's fine, we have some big plans here. We're putting together a Butler Performance stroker motor for this thing. Butler Performance is the king of the Pontiac world and they do really, really burly stuff. But just to keep it a little bit uh, down to earth, I'm gonna use the stock iron heads. I bought a 1975 400 and it came with these 6X heads we are going to take those things and now show you how to make free horsepower in pretty much any kind of engine. Because here's the deal, engines are air pumps, right? So the more air that comes in, the more air that goes out, the more fuel you can burn, the more power that they make. That's the theory behind literally anything. Turbochargers, cram air in. Superchargers, cram air in so that these engines are just acting or moving more air than an engine their normal size. All right, so the idea is just to optimize flow in and out. We can talk about the science of volumetric efficiency if you want. My fellow nerds and I will retire to the nerdery with our calculators. It's crazy, old motors were like 65%. You can get them into the high 80s, even into the 90s with porting and big cams and stuff like that. Uh, race motors, the more they spin, the VE gets really high. Uh, one fun fact, if you port a rotary motor, and I actually, most of my porting experience that I'm gonna lean on today is in porting rotary motors. You can port a naturally aspirated rotary motor, uh, like a peripheral port or a bridge port, and it will get over 100% efficiency. It can be like 105, 110, uh, because it has a natural supercharging effect. But listen, rotaries, you do not want to go down and dance with that Dark Lord, believe me. It's not, it's crazy, they work insane, and then they don't, and then they break, and it's all trouble. But they actually can be ported to the point where they act like bigger engines than they even are. Again, Felix Wankel was a dark wizard. Uh, he actually, he saw the shape for the rotary motor, the epicroid, in a dream when he was 17 years old. So if that's not the spookiest thing ever, I don't know what is. Again, don't deal with it, it's a bunch of dark magic. Back to piston motors. All right, so the plan here, and we could talk about the science for a really long time, but the basics are this. Engines need to flow air. You need to get more air flowing through your head. Head is where the horsepower is. And if you can do that, this thing's gonna kick butt. So that's what we're working on today. What's nice about this is yes, it's a huge pain in the butt. It doesn't really cost a thing. I'm going to pour some stock heads, probably pick up a bunch of flow and a bunch of horsepower, especially when we bolt the blower on this thing. It's only gonna cost me probably a day's worth of my time. Free. What's really nice is the guys at Butler said, hey, we used to port cast iron heads. We don't really bother anymore because everything we do is uh, aluminum just because it's so hard on the CNC machine to port the cast iron head. That's how burly these things are. Um, but we've got an old head that's cracked. You can have it, you can use it kind of as a porting template. They said, kind of give us 90% of what this thing is because this is really hogged out to the absolute max. So that's what we're gonna do here with this guy. Sort of use this uh, Butler ported head as a guide and make sure we get a nice tasty port going just like that. Okay, I have put this off long enough. I have been avoiding this task for a long time. It's time to finally get our hands on these heads and start porting. Uh, essentially, there's like three major things we're gonna do. Number one is what they call port match. That's gonna be kind of set uh, the inlet of the port so it's big enough for the intake. Some people call it gasket matching. Um, as you can see, this is a stock head. There's a bunch of extra material here. So first thing, number one, we're gonna set uh, the port shape itself. Then we'll come in here, raise the lower side, what they call the short side. Here, the, we're not gonna take out too much uh, material on the floor itself. And we'll stand after we've essentially blended the lower side in, we'll just come through and make sure that the, the top side of the port has a bunch of material removed just to kind of make sure the air can come in nice and smooth and it's got a lot of flow. Excuse me, flow? 
after that, we'll just come into the bowl a little bit on these heads, specifically uh, on the exhaust side. There's a ton of material you can remove behind the valve. So we'll come in and do that, make it look like this butler head, and this thing will be ready to rock. Yeah. All right, so the main things we're gonna do, essentially what they call gasket matching, where we're gonna set the shape of our port right at uh, the flanges, uh, the intake flange and the exhaust flange. So we're gonna put a gasket on here. You can see there's a bunch of overrun material we can take off. So we're gonna sort of set the size here similar to the butler head. Uh, I'll come in with some dye, lay it down, put this on, and then scribe our marks. And that just gives us a nice place to start. I think we're gonna do is we're gonna work on this transition here. That's on the low side, the bottom of the port. And we're gonna take a lot of material off of the bottom overall because it's really would just kill velocity as a ton of air comes along the bottom and doesn't have a smooth transition sort of into the chamber or into the cylinder. But here, we're just gonna smooth this down uh, and then a lot, and then we'll come in on the top side of the port. That's where we will remove a bunch of material and just kind of make sure the air has a lot of room and smooth laminar flow into the cylinder. And that's what we're gonna do. Let's get rocking one thing at a time. So first thing, I'm gonna lay this down with a bunch of die chem which is just this industrial marking die. It will, it will dry hard and then I can scrape a nice line we'll be able to see. And then I'll start cutting in here. People that do this all the time have sweet, sweet, sweet. Head stands. I like this rock and roll red over here, dang. You see somebody wearing this shade of nail polish, you know you're looking at a party animal, period. It says like, I want to be formal, right. but I'm here to party too. No, oh, too much, it'll be fine. We're gonna cut it away anyway. All right, so we're gonna lay this on. Make sure it lays down nice and smooth. When you use this stuff, wear gloves, it's crazy, crazy harmful to the human body. All right, let that dry. All right, if you like my sick nail polish skills, I've got three daughters that are under 10, so it's not my first time. I'm doing it now is just laying on a gasket just to figure out exactly where we're gonna match up these ports. I've got that die cam on there. It has now dried on both of the heads. And essentially you can just take a sharp scribe and make the marks you need to make and they will hold tight. You can see it's not a ton we're taking off here, but is it? it's not nothing. Sharper corners, thinner. This material in the middle is gonna be thinner. We're just gonna come in here. Mark it wherever we can. And then know where we're going. All these heads are, you know, they're made from different castings. You know what I mean? Nothing's perfect. So one head's gonna be a little bit different than another head. Another thing we're gonna do, once we're done here, now we can start blending, taking this is the push rod tube, but we're gonna take some of that volume out of there too, just to get a little more flow. We'll start somewhere. And you can see those are our lines. I'll be able to cut that right down. All right, so before we get cracking, let me tell you about the tools you're gonna need for this. You're gonna need one decent die grinder, uh, a straight one, not like one with a 90 degree tip on it. Uh, this is a very nice Matco piece. This is probably many hundreds of dollars. It's got variable speed. Uh, you can hold the end of it. It's very strong, well-balanced, awesome. You don't quite need this kind of gear to get this job done, but what you don't wanna do is go buy like the $12 thing you see in a circular uh, from an unnamed bottom dollar tool store that we're gonna, we all know what I'm talking about. Um, but go out and spend 60, 70 bucks on something halfway decent, and it's just gonna make it easier. It's not gonna jump around when you're in there trying to carve out hard metal. Um, and if you don't, it's gonna suck. It's gonna be really hard to control. Beyond that, you just need some carbide bits. I've done most of the work here with this guy. 
Uh, it's kind of just like a, a thicker uh, cone style with a rounded tip. I'm able to like kind of set my corners, remove a lot of material, but not set any flat edges. Because when you set a flat edge, it's really hard uh, to kind of control and take more away from it. And then I just got some random. This is for like tiny corners. This is for getting in a little bit further than this bit can go. Once that's all done, you come back in with these little sandpaper rolls. And this is on just a regular shaft. This goes right in the same machine and it spins. And once you've got it close, well, really close, and all you want to do is clean up the surface a little bit, let that air find something a little bit smoother to slide against. Uh, you come through with the uh, sandpaper and do a little bit of polish. You know, the port, port here, polish here. If you're wondering why I'm going through all this trouble with these old stock iron heads, porting them myself, there's a bunch of reasons why. But number one, I think it fits the theme of the car, right? This thing is like straight out of 83. And in 83, what you would have done is gotten the best iron heads you could find and had them ported or ported them yourself in your backyard. Turn up, kill them all, which had just come out, you know what I'm saying? Smoke some Marlboros, get down, not use any PPE. Uh, and then you would spend the weekend making a bunch of free horsepower. So that's number one. Number two, it's really tough right now to get your hands on Pontiac aluminum heads. It's just the supply chain, whatever's going on. You know, there's a couple different people that make them. Nobody seems to have them. So that's number two. And number three, they cost a bunch of money. We're not trying to spend here at Stay Tuned. So cool, cool factor, number one, two, supply chain, three monies. That's why. So I haven't, just to be honest with you guys, done a ton of cylinder head porting. I've built a bunch of rotary motors, ported those things. Uh, I've ported a couple of import heads, four cylinders and stuff when I was a kid. Um, this is essentially the same scenario, except it's in cast iron, so it's gonna be a nightmare uh, as far as just time and grinding. Grinding cast iron as hard as can be. Uh, it's just gonna take a lot of time to remove the kind of material we need to remove, and that's fine. I'm put on some headphones, turn on some jams, play some Deep Purple, zone out, get this done. And what's nice about this, Look, headers cost money, intakes cost money, cams, all that stuff costs a bunch of money. Porting heads, pretty much free. Good. So the deal with these heads, these are 6X-8 heads. There's uh, four, six, and eight. Uh, eight heads have 211 intake valves, 166 size uh, exhaust valves. We're gonna hog those out. Our guy at uh, Larry at Roberts Engine Development is gonna machine these out to accept the larger 177 exhaust valve. That's 1.77 inches. Um, the combustion chamber here is around 100. Uh, We're gonna mill this thing probably 5,000s or more. Take a little bit out of there, probably get that down to 95 or so. And then we've already got everything taken into account for our specific Butler Crank Eagle Rods and Ross Piston setup. We're trying to land around nine to one compression because we're gonna put a giant supercharger on top of here, and that's gonna work fine with that 91 compression. Either way, these heads have to flow. Hey, quick break here just to announce that Stay Tuned finally has some merchandise. We've got the Angelo's Garage Gym shirt that just dropped, the new Stay Tuned Lightning Bolt shirt, stickers, a couple other things, they're all available at this Shopify link, so give it a click. Um, thanks for supporting. Grab a shirt, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, back to the show. All right, so I'm just about done the major cutting on these intake ports on head number one. Yes, this is gonna take forever. Um, but we're committed at this point. Um, now I think I'm gonna go through and work the bowls on the exhaust ports. Um, essentially same kind of thing. There's a bunch of like really good gains to be had. Uh, with all this meat behind the exhaust ports, not as much as the intake. Intake is the big restriction, it looks like. And then I will come through um, to the actual port itself, where it exits the head, where the headers bolt up, uh, and I will rework those a bit too, and then kind of blend them all together. Then it's just gonna be a bit of sort of fine tuning, hit it all with some sandpaper, try to smooth it all as best we can, kind of give it a little, a little smoother finish, and then uh, one head will be ready to rock. All right, I'm gonna take a little break from head porting right now. I've got uh, this head intake port's just about done. Uh, it's time to talk about, you know, why? Why are we digging into all this stuff? So we're gonna give you a quick update on the project. If you're new here, Welcome to the jungle. I bought a 1974 Pontiac Firebird with the most insane paint job of all time. This thing reeks of 1982. I can still smell some Marlboro Reds 
And if, you hear, if you're like really quiet, really quiet, you can hear Whitesnake playing in this thing all the time. Uh, but this is the car, it's amazing. We bought it, uh, this guy, local guy, had essentially spent high school hanging around paint shops in Maryland and took it upon himself to paint his girlfriend's Firebird this insane uh, slew of colors. It's so cool. I bought this thing for a thousand bucks, um, essentially like a barn find old street freak that hasn't seen action since like 1990. And we've just been making it look better. Um, my guy Michael did like paint correction. He kind of revived the paint as best he could. He polished up these wheels. And uh, since you've last seen it, if you check back, um, last thing we did was the paint. So this thing came with the most wild interior as well, just to match everything. It's got a blue velour headliner. It's got blue velour seats. It had uh, some shag carpet here and there, and it was like kind of crusty, and I'm sure it's seen all sorts of action. So we wanted to just refresh everything. Uh, it had a green carpet that all got pulled out underneath. There was like some surface rust uh, on the floor itself. That all got scrubbed clean. A rust encapsulator was laid down. We got a fresh black carpet, and then we sent the velour seats out to a local carpet cleaning company and just had them give them a once over and they turned out pretty good. Uh, it just was like, you know, this thing was built in the 80s. This is, this is a total, a total babe magnet, right? So I wanna make sure these things are clean, we can sit on them uh, and I feel good about it. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't wanna sit down on an old seat, get pregnant, feel weird about it. All right, then we turned our attention under hood. Um, some of this stuff had like surface rust on it. It was a couple different colors. This was like an old, kind of like metallic blue that had faded and cracked. So we decided to kill all the rust, same kind of thing, scrub it all down um, and just paint it with a nice trim black. It looks awesome. Uh, it'll last like this for a really long time. This motor originally was a 350 that had come in the car. The guy put a cam and heads on it and then he topped it with a 671 blower. Uh, the hood's got a giant hole for a blower in it. So we're gonna keep that theme going. The whole point of this car is to like revive it to like 80s peak street freak awesome, but inject a, just a bunch more horsepower into it because why not? We can, right? So that's what we're doing right now with porting these heads. The deal is I bought a 1975 Pontiac 400 motor. Um, it's the last of the strong blocks. I was able to get one of the very last ones locally for about 900 bucks. Pulled it apart, spent a whole day tearing it apart, fighting this thing. It was kind of a rusty, crusty disaster. If you watch one of the old episodes, um, I fought that thing for like a day and a half. It was brutal, but got it all apart and then sent it off um, to my guy Larry at Robert's Engine Development, the guy that's uh, doing all the machine work for the motor and building the motor. Um, he took that block and heads, essentially that's all we're using. That thing saw a hot tank for a couple of days and then bead blasted, that's why these heads look so great. The block looks awesome um, and we are getting it fitted. Larry's been over there working, working strong and we're gonna talk about this in a later episode, but essentially it's gonna be a full uh, Butler performance stroker package. It's gonna be about 464 cubic inches using a Butler stroker crank, uh, some new Eagle uh, rods that just came out and a set of Ross pistons. Those combined with our cylinder heads I'm porting now uh, with an 871 or a 671 topped on top of that thing is gonna make gotta be an honest 600 horsepower. So it should be, it should be kick ass. Very excited about it. Larry's got that thing looking sweet. It's been a bunch of, of machine work and time and stuff, but it's gonna be awesome. So while I'm doing that, uh, Michael over here has gotten our fuel tank ready. Pretty much everything was, was gnarly and kind of rusty and crusty. When we pulled the fuel tank out of this thing, it had like a giant rust hole in the top of it. So we went ahead and got a whole new setup. So just to get serious on the fuel system, and again, we're keeping this very 1980s technology. We're not like doing some crazy in-tank pump. We're not gonna fuel inject this thing and make it look old school. We're gonna keep it really old school. Just kind of turn it up to 11. So to do that, I got a Holley Sniper tank, brand new. The old one was rusted straight through. Um, this is just like Summit Racing, you know, $50 fuel sump. Um, but the deal with this thing is, if you flip this over, this is the back of the car. So it's pointed out the back um, and it's welded in and there's essentially you drill five, two and a quarter inch holes to feed this thing. And it's gonna feed that giant supercharge. It's gonna have two, four barrels on top of it. It's gonna be a thirsty, thirsty boy. And instead of trying to feed any kind of serious motor from, this is the stock pickup, right? It's a three eighth inch single line. That's not gonna get the job done. Instead, we've got this sump welded on uh, and it's gonna feed, you know, a thousand horsepower, no problem. And what's cool about this, you're gonna see it from behind the car, it's gonna look menacing as hell. Um, we got this Holly 
HP 150 fuel pump. It's gonna be loud. You're gonna hear You know, you're gonna know this thing is, not only does it look insane, but it's serious as hell. So the way you wanna do this is, you get your sump welded on. Um, we're just checking it for leaks. This is regulated PSI. We're at probably 15 PSI here. So if you like these welds, I did them. If you don't like them, Michael did them. Uh, come in with a little bit of spray. It's just like a Windex. You do this with tires too, if you think you have a leak. Put 20 PSI in this thing regulated. And you just look for bubbles. Like you can see not, they're gonna sort of foam up. And you can see nothing crazy is happening. It's running down, but essentially they would just make a ton of bubbles. It's an easy way to check it. Yeah, it's kind of like, a, you know, it's another way you can spend some time and not a bunch of money to super upgrade your fuel system. Instead of getting like a crazy aftermarket hat um, with drop-in internal fuel pumps, which you can do and work awesome, but that's pretty spendy. Similar to me, hand porting these heads and saving a bunch of money. I am going to just put this sump on. We've got it welded on. It's just a bunch of time and a hole saw and a welder and you are ready to feed a serious beast of a motor. So that looks good. It'll just get painted now and we can keep on rocking. So we're really close on the intake ports on this head being totally done. I feel like they're pretty uniform. One nice thing when you're dealing with something like this, like this is the pinch point here is that push rod tube. I'm gonna take a set of, these are called snap gauges. These are the cheapest garbage Chinese ones money that money can buy. Um, doesn't matter, they're gonna do the job. So I'm over to my butler ported head, which is like the max big boy style you can go to. Uh, I put this in there, I locked it to the size of the width of their port. And I'm really trying to go like nine tenths of their port size wise. So essentially I've measured it with my calipers. It's about 1060 here. Boom. I'm just gonna back that down a little bit. But no matter what, you can use this, essentially these expand and contract and you can lock it in size. So I'm gonna push this in here. Essentially, I'm gonna put this in place. It's going to boo, 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 boo. find that size, twist it so it locks down, and then we can kind of see with each port if we're in the ballpark, and it really does look like we are here. These two are pretty dang uniform. Same here too. I'm gonna take a little bit of material off the bottom here. And this one is definitely that size. So that feels good. We know it's about 40 thousandths less than the Butler one. So that's fine. That's gonna work for us. So I saw, I have a little bit of work to do here. No big deal. The other thing you wanna do is again, try to keep everything uniform, but this is like, you know, how could you possibly, you're essentially eyeballing all of this, making sure you're not cutting any holes in anything. So another cool trick, I've got an exhaust valve here and I can just take it to each port and you can turn these down even more. This is a trick that David Butler himself told me. Uh, it's pretty cool. And you can use it to visualize essentially how big each port is. You can see that one is not going in, I can, I can open this one up a little bit. This big boy is the best. So these are about the same and I'm just gonna do a little bit more work here. And if you want to throw this on a lathe and then you can really get it in there and just make sure everything looks uniform. Again, this is like as much art as it is science. So I'm just trying to eyeball it, make sure it all looks the same um, and not cut any holes in anything. So that's the story. All right, let's get back to it. It is hot here. I'm trying not to breathe in any metal dust. I'm sweating like a whore in church. It's time to go Rambo on this thing. Hold on. Editor guy, can you make this a cool Rambo scene? They drew first blood.
Yeah, rolling. Real time. Sweet. All right, so I'm happy with that. That is pretty uniform. All right. All right, so I have just about cut what we need cut in the bowl here for the exhaust. You can see that's the basic shape. I'll take a little bit more out, but we're pretty much rocking and rolling there. You like that? She looks good. My arm feels like I've been riding a chopper down the coast for two days. Feels like it's gonna fall off, but we're going. It's free, free horsepower. All right, these are the stock ports at the header. Essentially, obviously the bowl, you need a nice smooth transition all the way out to these ports, but if these ports are smaller than they need to be, it's gonna restrict flow. Again, engines are air pumps. Let's get as much air through them as we can so we can cram as much gas in them as we can, make as much free horsepower as we can. All right, so you can see here, these aren't even super uniform. They're a little bit wonky. What I'm gonna go now is show you a cool little trick for building a template without having to get too scientific about it. Hey, if you like what we're doing on this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate you guys. Stay tuners. Stay tunies. Stay tunies. Tunies. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, here we have the butler ported head. This thing is a 10 out of 10. But again, it's cracked, so we're just using it as a template. So I want this shape and size exhaust port on my head. So what I gotta do, I'm gonna build a quick template. Um, and essentially, I'm just gonna come through here. This is the back of a legal pad, just a single piece of cardboard. And I'm gonna tape that down real quick. Two, two, two. Make sure I'm covering both of the bolt holes. All right, and if you don't know this trick, Next time you bust it out, your friend's garage, they're gonna look at you like you're a wizard. You can thank me. I can thank the guy who showed it to me. And get this close, find one edge, tape it down, get yourself a ball bean hammer. This only really works when you've got a nice sharp edge somewhere, but if you do have a sharp edge, you can see it's really easy to just use that metal, a couple of taps. You don't have to do any crazy transferring or anything. And just tap that. Tap that thing against the edge. And now we're gonna go for the middle. Holding it down. You just want to kind of bash it into the sharp edge. And it works awesome. Same here. On the outside edge, I'm using the sort of flat part of the ball peen. So now we've got the basic shape down. I'm gonna come through with a punch here, find that hole. Same thing over here. I'm gonna look first, because it's somewhere, over there it is. There she is, now I'm coming through here with a little razor blade. Cut that off, and we have one instant sweet template that we just copied straight off the other motor. Boom. Feel pretty good about that. That is, now I'm just gonna blend that in. Now right, you can see there, we're just about done on that shape. I'm gonna bring the port, blend it in a little more, but that's about as much material as I'm gonna remove. You can see that. I'll show you, let me get that thing lit up. Go, um, yeah, there you go. Compared to, you can see how much flow you're looking at there. Compared to this little stock guy, come across, that boy, you can see how much restriction you're looking at comparatively. Okay, so I am now done with that first exhaust port. 
I took our little template, I just flipped it over, I did the second exhaust port, same kind of thing. That looks nice and tidy. Came in, opened this up. I didn't go up too much because these things actually don't have a ton of material here. And then last thing to do is this center exhaust port. I've got a kind of wonky template made up, but it does work. I'm gonna just scribe it in. Scribe in what we've got. I've done a little work on it already. And just finish this guy up. All right, so now I'm gonna open this one up, do a little bit here, and then we're gonna get ready to do some polishing. Wrap this thing up. Finally almost done this first head. I don't know who put all this metal in the way of my horsepower, but uh, we are gonna get it <laughs> gone. All right, here it goes. Ready to wrap this up. Let's go. All right. All right, I'm just about ready to be finished up the actual porting and we're gonna get into the sandpaper and start finishing this thing up. Uh, all the exhaust ports are opened up looking really nice. I took a little bit of material out everywhere I wanted to. Um, this isn't like crazy extreme, but it's gonna be a huge increase over what these stock heads could have done. All the work in the bowls you can see is just opened up a ton of airflow. Uh, intake ports looking good too. I'm feeling really good about this. The only thing that sucks is I have another head to do. But that's all right. We are ready to rock. It's time for some finish work. And then I'm gonna be finished work. Let's go. All right, head one is done. I just finished up with the sandpaper, kind of just really fine tuning the ports that I've been working on. Again, just to recap, really quick, went to each flange, the ports, the intake, and exhaust ports, open them up to the size we wanted, blended that in, took out material mostly on the top side to help the air flow, blended what they call the low side transition here, and didn't take anything off the floor, and then really important, went into these bowls and took out a bunch of material behind the valves to really let this air flow in and flow out. Because remember, engines, air pumps, this helps them pump more air, more air equals more power, and that rules. All right, let's start on head two. Just kidding, I'll do the head two. You guys don't have to watch. Uh, if you like this, don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this episode of Stay Tuned. We will see you guys next time. Next time we get to this Firebird, that engine's gonna run. Well, this engine's gonna run. All right, I'm going to sleep.